Hey guys, what's up? Uh, today I am going to share with you a little slice of my childhood. The car behind me here is a crazy Ford Capri Mark I. It's heavily modified, it's powered by a small block Chevy. In 1981, when I was just a wee kid, I saw this car race and it had such an impact on me that it is one of the reasons I've become a lifelong motor racing fanatic. The car was built by a guy called Brent Bullivant. It made its race debut in 1975, and 10 years later, in 1985, it appeared in a New Zealand-made movie called Shake a Run. And it's because of the, new, uh, the, the, movie, the movie connection that I refer to the car as the Shake a Run Capri. And what I'm going to do with this story is I'm going to split it into two parts. I'm going to talk about the car's race and ownership history in the first part, and then in the second part, I'm going to provide details of its Shake a Run cameo and also show you uh, the, the, the part of the movie where the car appears, which is, which is really cool. Uh, so uh, yeah, if you, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button just down here. So here it is, the beast, the car that at least partially changed my life. Uh, now, as mentioned, it was originally built by Brent Bullivant out of the Hawke's Bay. And it made its race debut in at Bay Park in Easter of 1975, and it looked more or less as it does now. It's an incredible time warp of a car. It's been a race car for nearly 50 years. It was painted yellow back then. It had these flares, but they did look slightly different. It had a different front and rear spoiler, but essentially, yeah, this was, this was it. It had a Ford 302 small block V8, and it had a Borg Warner transmission and a Ford 8-inch rear. But what really brought a lot of attention to the car was that Bullivant himself was only 19 years old when he debuted the car. So he'd been building it throughout 1974 from a 1973 Capri road car. And the fact that a teenager could achieve this really blew a lot of people away. Now Bullivant was obviously a really talented car builder. But his problem was that he didn't have the funds to properly develop the car. Uh, he carried out some development work on it. He swapped out the small block Ford for a much more potent small block Chevy, which eventually was fitted with fuel injection. He fit a Muncie gearbox. He put a full floater rear end in it. Uh, and he changed the front and rear spoilers, similar to, to what you see here. But he couldn't afford brand new tyres, for example. He, he raced the car on second-hand tyres. Uh, I read somewhere that one set of tyres he was running was four years old and this was part of the problem that he had. He just he just didn't have the funds to to extract the full potential out of it. And I don't think Bullivant ever took the car to the South Island. I believe he only raced it in the North Island. Raced it for basically three seasons, 75, 76 and 77. Never took the car to the South Island, basically couldn't afford to. Um, but he, when he wasn't circuit racing it, he raced it in pretty much anything he could. He raced it in hill climbs, actually took it to the drag strip. The car would run 11.5 second quarter miles, even with a set of four-year-old back tyres. It's hugely impressive. But Bullivant's car building skills and fabrication skills actually brought him to the attention of New Zealand racing driver Jim Richards and Jim Richards had moved to Australia in 1975 and so by 1977 78 or so he was carving out a hugely successful career over there um, and Jim actually offered Brent a job looking after his race cars in Australia. Uh, Jim came out here in 1979 with his Murray Bunn built Ford Falcon sport sedan and Brent also came out with him and in fact Brent actually came out and brought out a set of beautiful BBS uh, wheels which were fitted to this car. Jim Richards drove this car in a practice session during that 1979 season I think at Pukekohe uh, and he was really impressed by the car but he said it really needs a new set of tyres and that was Bullivant's problem. He he just didn't have the funds to buy new tyres, buy all the best equipment and get the full potential out of it. In 1979, Bullivant decided to sell the car. It took a wee while to sell. 
It was eventually purchased in late 1980 by single-seater Hot Shoe Graham Baker. Uh, now, Graham Baker had won various championships in, in single-seaters, but he, for one season, in 1974, he was the driver of the famous PDL Mustang. He purchased this car in late 1980, carried out various modifications, including the flares. So he's the one that radiused these flares right out, whereas they used to sort of come down here an inch or two. He radiused the flares right out. And the reason he did that was because he fitted the car with a set of magnesium McLaren Formula 5000 wheels. And in the back, they were 14 inches wide, so they basically didn't fit under the existing flares. Now, Baker had the funds to properly develop the car, and he was a really good driver too. And it was actually Graham Baker that I saw racing this car when I was just a wee kid in 1981. And he was fast. At the time, there were... At the time, modified sedan racing was really becoming hugely popular in New Zealand. And the, really the two fastest cars during the 1981 season were two similar cars to this, actually. A couple of Mark I Capris powered by small block Chevys. One was owned by Wayne Huxford and one was owned by Inky Tullock. And at Manfield, when I was a wee kid, Graham Baker beat both those cars. In fact, in one of the races... He was leading the race, he spun off on the opening lap, dropped to the back of the field, drove back through the field and finished second to Huxford. It was quite amazing. Unfortunately, Baker only drove the car for one season and he sold it. Right, so Bob Cullinane was the next owner. Bob raced it for two seasons. He repainted it black uh, with red into yellow fade down the side. Look, looked really good in, in, in that colour scheme. He sold the car to Brian Friend, and Brian raced it up until 1985, and then he raffled it off. Brian actually repainted the car a couple of times during his ownership. He's a car painter. He painted it blue and red, and then he painted it black and gold. Uh, he raffled the car off rather than sell it, and the guy that won the raffle, his name was Dave Borry. And it was Dave, just after taking ownership, Dave sold the car to the production company for it to appear in the Shaker Run movie. Uh, after it had finished in its movie cameo, it really didn't do a lot of racing. Dave did race it at Pukekohe, I believed, and crashed it and basically rebuilt the car after that. But it never, to my knowledge, it really didn't do a lot of racing. Uh, basically sat in the shed until the late 1990s. Um, the McLaren Formula 5000 wheels, which you know, in the late 1980s, early 1990s, as people were restoring old Formula 5000 cars, they became really desirable. So uh, at some point they were, I assume, sold off and Dave fitted these wheels here that are still on it today. He repainted the car green, really didn't do much with it, and it was purchased in 1998 by current owner Graham Barnes. Okay, let me show the inside. This is Graham's office for the past 25 years. This thing's all business. That's so cool. Little message on the dash there. Amazing car. Love the originality of it. So cool. Uh, originally it had an, a roll cage built from exhaust tubing, but by today's safety standards, it's really not up to scratch. So he's replaced the roll cage, but really the car is largely unchanged. Okay, so we've got the one piece front clip taken off here so that we can show you the motor. So. Yeah, like I say, Graham has owned the car for 25 years now. Um, he started a category years ago called Kiwi Sports Sedans for old cars like the Capri here that have period race history. Uh, so he's running a small block Chevy, 350 cubic inch Chev, producing about 620 horsepower. You can see it's just a full tube frame front. This car with Graham aboard 
achieved 296k an hour down the back straight at Pukekohe one year before they put the kink in on the back straight. So, yeah, she can haul the mustard, that's for sure. It's amazing. It, even though it's a tube frame front, if you look at the back here as well, we've got all the cover off the back. It's all basically a frame in the back here as well. But it's still got the original floor. It hasn't, it's not a full tube frame car. So this is fairly typical of a lot of these cars as they were raced in period during the 70s and the 80s. Not a full tube frame car, but this is in fact the original Capri floor pan. A lot of the components that you see in the front here, a lot of the suspension components and basically the design and layout is still as the car was built by Brent Boulevard. It's really amazing. It's just a, a true, true time warp car and it's, it's so neat that Graham has kept it true to, to the car that I saw racing on that day back in 1981 as a little kid.